Well, hello and welcome back to Squash Fit, brought to you by England Squash. This is the series to get you back from your home after lockdown, all the way back onto court, so you can really fire on all cylinders and thrive on the squash court. We've been using and going to keep using all of our expertise and resources to help you to come back in a way that helps you to manage your body, reduce the risk of injury and really enable you to thrive on a squash court. We've already had the likes of Laura Massaro, Nick Matthew presenting. We've got Paul Carter here this evening. We've also got next week, we've got so much more still to come. There's Josh Taylor, Tanya Bailey, the likes of Sarah Jane Perry. So there's so much more to look forward to. Of course, Ollie Turner is providing nutritional tips on the Squash Fit Hub. So if you want to check those out, they're really worthwhile. So I'd visit that. Um, I'm going to be here to guide you all the way through this series. From here on in, you're going to be best to do these sessions on a squash court because it's becoming very, very specific. Just a quick reminder, we are live every Monday and Thursday, 6 o'clock to about 6.45. If you need to catch up on any of them, they are on demand. So you can visit the Squash Fit Hub and, and check out any of your favorite sessions or catch up on anything you miss. So you can always do that and, and revisit it. You can also sign up for any of the sessions via the Squash Fit Hub. Um, other than that, if you've got any questions that you'd like posed to Carts, you, um, you can do so via the chat and I, I'll look at them and, and bring them in. But other than that, I think that's, that's everything. So we've only got the session to look forward to. We've got Paul Carter working with Lee Burney. Paul Carter is, of course, someone that's achieved so much in the game. He's a former British national champion as a player. He's worked with so many of the top players in the world. He's, he's, he's brought through five top, top ranked or top five ranked players in the world. He's been part of the England setup, numerous world championship victories, Commonwealth Games, you name it. Paul Carter's been there and done it. He's worked with all the elite coaches in the England pathway and right the way through. So he's going to impart a lot of knowledge. He's going to be working on a ghosting session on movement. And I can't wait for this one. So it should be a great session. Over to you, Kart. Thanks very much, Lee. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'll try and keep this as brief as possible. Uh, hopefully the technology will uh, keep up with us. Uh, and I apologise, I have to wear my glasses if I've got the sheet in front of me. So when I do refer to that, I apologise. Um, we've got the court set up. I hope you can see the numbers. We have number one front right, number two, number three, number four, number five, and number six. They're the numbers that I use. I'll be using, referring to those numbers. You can have any system that you want. But I will be referring to those numbers throughout the session. Uh, I think it's a very clear sort of instruction for players to, to go to certain areas of the court. And you'll also notice that on the floor, we have some half balls that are positioned uh, where I think sort of hitting striking zones tend to be. Um, and also the, 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 main, the main purpose of the half ball really is to get your player, to get you to think about a ball that you're hitting. So often people just go on a court and they ghost and they just swing a racket and it's aimless. I call it fly swatting. I think having some targets on the ground, uh, obviously you've got to use your imagination with the number two and number three because they're, they're the volleys up high. But, you know, there is a, a fixed marker for, for Lee to, to, to be looking for when he goes. Um, the the sessions we broke up into three sort of things. We're going to look at the front part of the court, the back part of the court, and then we're going to look at the whole court. So I'm going to give you some movement patterns, some ideas of different sequences of shots as, as the session progresses. But just as a very, very short, and I've been, been reminded by uh, Lee Drew not to go too much into the warm-up. Can you just do a couple of little jogs up and down for me? If you could do that for me, Lee. Uh, just get yourselves nicely ready for the session. Um, three or four up and downs, a few laterals across the court. So there's no, there's no issues in terms of pulling any uh, muscles uh, for the session. Um, Lee is, is very well conditioned. Uh, he's been training really hard in lockdown. He's done numerous movement sessions in car parks and in fields and etc. So his level of fitness is quite high. So what I want you to be aware of when, when you do these things, do them at a place that's comfortable for you. Do them so you understand them. Don't go too mad that you're not understanding what the session's about. OK, so a uh, couple more, Lee, and then we're, we're ready to rock and roll. Um, I'll stand back here now. Uh, if you could get your rackets now, guys, and just get onto the onto the tee for me. 
Uh, and we're just going to go for a, a couple of a couple of uh, three minutes of just a general what I call float dose. So nice and easy, Lee. Just float around the court, you know, swinging the racket, loosening yourself up. Nice and easy. Start lots of sessions off with the pros doing these 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 sort of uh, float ghosting sessions. Just get into the feel of the court. No stress. I think for me the key thing is when 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 players ghost, they tend to put a lot of stress into the movement. Keep it as relaxed and as smooth, and do it at a rhythm that's comfortable for you. Once you start to get familiar with some of the movement patterns, then we can increase the pace. What I will be looking for throughout the session. Um, is it, it, really focusing on the grip. So I think grip has a massive part to, to movement. And I think if, you, if, you, if you're tensing that racket up too much, the whole body becomes tense. So really think about the grip being nice and relaxed, nice and smooth. Think about your toe position. You know, if, Lee, if you could come into that front uh, left for me, Lee, and play a straight drive and get that toe round. Try and get those toes pointing to the side ball when you're doing your straight drive. And maybe the, sorry, they'll get in your way there, buddy. You can do a cross court where you get your toe just opening up a little bit. So I think the way you plant your feet is really important. Um, and also the tendency for when you're ghosting is for the head to go to the floor, looking for the floor. Don't look for the floor. Know where you are on the squash court. Know where you are. Have that, that, that peripheral vision. Know where your opponent is. Know where you are. Don't keep checking. Don't keep moving your head up and down. Moving the head up and down. Creates, it, creates an imbalance in the body. You see lots of players leaning over. I think you, you find Lee keeps himself nice and poised at the tee. Go for so about you're, another, you're, another 30 you're seconds. You're trying to make this as realistic as possible, aren't you, Carl? Everything you're describing is about realism, about, you know, if you put a ball there or you put an opponent on there, you could be playing a game of squash, basically. And, th and that's, that's the key message of tonight's session, I think, Lee. Absolutely. I mean, it's real. It's, it's, you're playing the game. You want to practice the game. Otherwise, you might just go run around the tennis court outside. You know, you're practicing shots. You're, you're rehearsing. You might have your, your, your players that you play every week and, and he, he's very good at taking the ball into the back corners. You know, these sort of things you can practice when you're ghosting. You, know, you can prepare yourself for games. Um, really, really important, that, Lee. Absolutely. Yeah, okay. That's, that's fabulous, Lee. Really good. Lovely. You ready to, ready to go? Yeah, lovely. Okay, so if we just look at movement now, uh, Lee, in, in, in three different aspects. So we, we're going to just go between number one and number two. It's a straight drive and a volley drive. Straight drive, volley drive. Typical sort of movement that a, a, a club player would do is movement. So you can just go number one to number two. Lee will demonstrate that for you. Then we'll give Lee a little rest and we'll give you sort of 30 seconds, 40 seconds to actually do that. So you can just do straight drive and, and volley drive, Lee, for me, please. Lovely, very good. And just a volley drive. Just keep that going for a little bit, Lee. Lovely. Just keep moving. Lovely. Superb. And you can see Lee's well conditioned. He looks very, he looks very smooth. He looks very relaxed in what he's doing there. So, okay, guys, if you want to give that a little go for me, just 10, 15 seconds, 20 seconds, whatever one you feel, just move into number one and number two. Just move in between two shots. Straight drive, and you're, straight drive. Straight and drive, you're thinking straight about drive. rhythm and flow, aren't you? You're looking to, to get that flow and rhythm the whole time. All the, all the time. I mean, Lee looked very, very conditioned there. He looked very smooth, very comfortable. You know, I don't want to see stress. I don't want to see this big plant. He's very quiet in the way he lands his feet on the floor. Try and think in a bit of rhythm. Once you've done 10 shots, have a little breather. And then, then what I will introduce then is what Lee was doing was what I would call the typical club player would do. Just move between two, two shots, playing a drive, playing a volley, playing a drive, playing a volley, playing a drive, playing a volley. What I want him to bring in now is actually a little bit more realism, Lee, you know, so he's actually playing the drive, coming back to the tee, just holding the tee, creating that little split step, some of the stuff that Tanya done with the guys last week, really initiating that split step, really thinking about holding the tee for me now, Lee. So you're going to do the same, I'll tell you what, we'll switch sides. We'll, we'll do straight drive from number six, straight volley from number five. So number six, straight drive, hold the tee, Lee. Lovely, very good. The cards, you when you're switch. holding the tee, you're imagining your yep. opponent's going to hit. So you're waiting until your opponent hits, then you move to the ball. Is that what you're looking for? 100% Lee. And, and it's so easy just to move between one, one point to another. It's much harder to stop and hold yourself at the tee. That's the realism of the game, isn't it? You know, your player's playing the shot. So we're now we're getting to this, this, the, the, the situation where Lee's actually almost imagining he's playing a drive to length He's playing a straight drive to length. And his opponent's played a drive and he stepped across and volleyed. Lovely. So Lee's demonstrated that really well. Uh, if you'd like to at home now, just have a little go at doing that for me. So you're into number six, number five. Straight drive, straight volley. Thinking about 
The foot planting, think about how that toe at number six is pointing towards the side all nice and balanced. Give that a little go. And that, that just helps to get your body in the right position for when you're hitting your shot to improve the quality of the shot when the ball is actually there, doesn't it? Absolutely, Lee. I mean, you know, if that, the whole game is about targets, mi minimising what your opponent can hit. So if Lee's getting nicely balanced in number six, kind of straight drive back to number four, keeping that ball to two floorboards, he hasn't got to worry about this side of the court, has he? I mean, the, the player's not going to get the ball over there. So, yeah, it's really important. It's balanced, it's smooth, it's not over lunging. You know, Lee's very, very fit, but I've, I've been working with a few players and, you know, the more they stretch, the more they lunge, it's very hard to get out of that. The game, the game will dictate that to you. The game will dictate sometimes you just, it's just uncomfortable. But when you're practicing, let's try and keep it nice and easy, less stress in the body. Hopefully everyone's had a little time to do that. They've gone to number five and to number six. The next little sequence, Lee, I'll jump out of the camera. Could you do me um, number, number, number one to number two? Same again, but this time, really think about um, you're, you're watching the ball, where it's coming from, where it's going to. You're imagining your opponents hitting, hitting the ball. You're really, and using your racket to help you move, okay? So if you can watch Lee there now, watching. Looking for the ball, stepping in, done a nice rhythm, hold the tee there, Lee. Lovely, very good. Boom. Super, lovely recoil of the racket. The Dave Pearson special, the recoil, bringing it back. Boom. Lovely, looking for the body. Maybe hold the tee a fraction longer there, Lee. That's it, lovely, good. Got a lovely line, the opponent's on it. They've seen that, boom, and you're up to that volley. Lovely. So there's a lovely bit of rhythm there. Balance, looks superb. Thanks, Lee, brilliant. Okay, guys, if you could... Um, Perhaps try that from one now for me. So watching where the ball's coming from, it's coming into the front, watching where it's going to, looking to step across and volley the ball. And this will just help you to start to read the game a little bit more, won't it? So you can start to see where the ball's going to go. You can just start to practice tracking it so that it becomes that much easier when you play. I'm so pleased you said that, Lee. Yeah, tracking the ball is, is something, actually, Lee and I had a little bit of a session early on today and I was feeding the ball to the back of the court. And, you know, while it was going to that, occasionally leaves just going to the back and they're just arriving there. And said, no, you've really got to track the ball. And you can hone these skills in, in, in ghosting. You really can hone these skills in. Really use your imagination. Don't just use it as a physical exercise. I think so many players just use ghosting as a physical exercise. Yes, it is a physical exercise. But, you know, a lot of the pros, as you know, Lee, you know, it's their bread and butter of their training. And done ghosting well, it becomes so technical, doesn't it? Absolutely. You can iron lots of technical, you know, Lee hasn't been out hit, you know, hardly any squash balls in a year, you know, with, with, with lockdown. We've done so much in, in, in the way of movement that I know when he gets back into playing, it's, gonna, it's really going to help him. But he's been very, very diligent in his practices. So, OK, hopefully everyone's done that one for me now. So what we'll have a little look, look, look at now is a few little sequences. I'm not in the camera, am I? Sorry. We'll have a look at a couple of little sequences here. Um, so, Lee, could you, could you do me cross-court drive from number one? Hold the tee, volley drop from number five, cross court lift out from six. Thank you. So, Karts, here would you be building this specifically for rallies or difficult movements that you might struggle with? Or, I guess, if you play someone. Asset. Absolutely, Lee. Spot on. I mean, that to me, somebody's taking me into the front left. You, you could just continue to do that for me, Lee. Into the front left. It's cross court drive. I've come in, I've put the ball up, he's played a drop, I've put it in, Lee's lifted himself out and reset. So we're thinking about situations in a game, Light, lightly sequences of shots, lightly events. You can't, you can't predict everything, we know that. If you could just go a few more, Lee, let's have a lift out cross court, watching the ball, volley drop and lift out, back to left and then reset at the team. Okay, guys, if I can let you have a, have a little play with that one for me for about, you know, 10 shots, let's do 10, 12 shots of that. Cross court from number one, volley drop from number five, cross court lift back to number three, reset and go through the process again. Yeah, and you, you can mix this up, but you wouldn't want to do too many straight away, would you? Because you want to work at specific patterns and areas rather than making it too random initially. Uh, that's why we're keeping it into real sort of sequences. Just now the movement patterns, understand the movement patterns that, that you would play. You know, a good lob serve from somebody, you know, chances are somebody's going to probably play a boast off of that and you're moving into number one. So there are, there are patterns that emerge from the game of squash. 
Hopefully everyone's had enough chance to have a little go at that one. Lee, can we just do um, the opposite this time? So you're in, in for your six, six, two, five. And we'll pick the pace up a little bit here now, Lee. So we're just still looking for that ball, Lee. Really good. Lovely. And lift out. Beautiful. Look at the way Lee's watching the ball out. He's in for the straight front, cross court drive, volley drop, and lift out. Look how the racket stays there. What I want you to think about, guys, when you're doing this now, can you think about your elbow? We haven't mentioned that yet. If you look at, you know, a lot of, lot of coaches, a lot of coaches, they'll get the racket up. Yeah, the racket's up, but the racket's only up because Lee's elbow is up. He's using his elbow to help him. He's using his racket to guide him across the court. That's wonderful, yeah. Lee. What so I'd good. say, Karts, is looking at this is everything Lee's doing is helping him with his movement. So his shot links with his movement, his movement links with the shot, and it's all connected up. I think um, there's a couple of little bits there that I thought if, 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 if there was a ball in play, it almost looked like it looked like he was playing, didn't it? Definitely. Yeah, I mean, the head's not dropping. Um, so give us another couple of, couple, of, couple of shots on that one, guys. So cross court from five, volley drop from two. Have I got that right? Yeah, volley drop from two, lift out from number one. Confusing myself there. Lee. <laughs> Did you okay, think so about let's... changing your name to Lee for this session, Cards? Just oh, to, no, to, to no, run in. Perfect, wasn't it? <laughs> got Lee, Lee and Lee. Um, <laughs> okay, so what we're going to do now, we're going to put that whole front of that court together now. So, Lee, you're going to go one... Well, sorry, one, two, five, six. And I'll jump out the way. One, two... Um, if you're ready to go at home, join in. One, two, five. And then the volley. Lovely, straight in. One. Carts, would you change the type of shots you're hitting as well? Or would you just keep the same type of shot you're hitting? I would go for a straight volley off the volleys. Straight from the front. Straight from the volley. Boom. Straight from the front. Good. Really good. Very good, lovely, and have a breather there. Not on Lee. I'll let everyone have a little go at that one. So what I know, um, Lee, you, you, you're you, you've always looking for that volley across the middle, aren't you, Lee? And that that sinking back down the side. I think that's really important to get that 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 concept of looking for the volley and looking for the volley in front of the service box. So many players volley half volleys around the service box. If you've noticed where we've got the positions of number five and number two, we've got the ball out. Really encouraging players to look for the volley. Don't get the ball. Don't wait for the ball to come to them. Look and hunt the volley. It's hunt a very positive volley. way, isn't it, of playing and thinking about the game. And also, I think it makes it on your terms slightly more. So you have, you're always giving yourself the option and then it's your choice whether you take it or not. And then you can always drop back if you want to. But you've always got that threat and that intent initially, haven't you? Yes, absolutely. Okay, Lee, so we'll have, we'll have one more little go at the front here and we'll do, uh, we'll do a little bit of a random one here and I'm going to call some numbers so hopefully the guys at home can hear me and I'm just going to call some numbers but I really want you to think about some of the technical stuff now, Lee. So you're looking at you know, watching the ball, holding the tee, elbow, all the stuff that we've worked on, okay? So three, two, one, one. Five. Lovely, five again. Look for that volley, Lee. Hunt it out. Hunt that volley, five again. Good. Hope you're doing this at home, guys. Strike six. Good. Five volley drop. Lovely. Five volley drop. Lovely. One straight. Two volley drop. Good. One cross. Five cross. Beautiful. Five cross. Lovely. Six straight. Really good. Five more shots. Six. Five. Two. Oh, I can't you there, Lee. It went two and you went off point to two. Oh, sorry. Okay. Lovely. So we, always we, keep, always keep them guessing, Carts. Always keep always them guessing. Keep them guessing. I was going to chuck in a number eight there, Lee, but I didn't. No. So, you know, there you could actually say the movement perhaps broke down a little bit. And that's, and that, you know, that does happen in the game, doesn't it? You know, the game will dictate to you. You know, so I think it's really nice, as we said at the start, to execute some of these movement patterns in a pace that's nice and comfortable for you. Get rhythm, understand what shot you're looking for, use your imagination, your visualisation, you know, blah, 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 all, all, all that stuff. 
but then chuck in a fast one, you know, and it all breaks down, then go back down again. Has there yeah. been any questions at all? Or we... No, I think, I think you're all good. I think we're covering it pretty in depth here, Kart. So I think you can, you can crack on. Can you give me a time check, Lee, so I don't go over, just in case I run over here a little bit? You're fine. I think everyone's chomping at the bit to, to keep doing this and listening. So you've got another good 20 minutes or so. Tell you what we do. Let's, let's, let's just do one more uh, speedy go. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call the numbers. Uh, we're going to go for um, we're going to go for ten we're going to go for ten shots. I'm going to pull the numbers to Lee, uh, and then we're finished with the front part of the call, and then we're bringing the back part of the call. Okay, everybody, three, two, one, five, five, one, two, one, one, two, six. Six drop, six counter drop, five volley drop. Lovely. So if you were doing that on your own carts, would you um, yeah. just imagine in your mind that someone's calling it for you and calling the different types of shots so you can get that stop start and explosiveness and then yeah. changing the shots? Yeah. It was funny you should say that because I had the conversation with Tanya last week before she'd done her session with the guys. And uh, she said what she used to do is just re record her voice on her phone calling numbers. <laughs> I feel, why didn't I think about that? <laughs> so you just put that at the front of the court, press play, and then you've got the random numbers in play. So it's very hard to deceive yourself, isn't it? So no, I'm all right. I've got, I've got voices in my head anyway, so it's, it's okay. quite random. <laughs> so I really like that, and that's something I shared with you last week, wasn't it, Dave? Yeah. How are you feeling? You okay? Controlled? Nicely balanced? Happy? Lovely. Okay. Okay, so... Um, if, if it's okay with everybody, just have a look at the back part of the court there, a bit of movement at the back part of the court. And, um, I don't want to make too, too long an explanation on this, but Lee, if you could, uh, just, I'll grab your racket probably for a sec. Just at the tee for me, Lee, some of those drills that we've been doing where I've just got you to open your, your legs to, to get that turn. Yeah, lovely. Super. Super. So if you can just watch Lee then, maybe just start going along with Lee on this one. So you're just standing at the tee on the balls of your feet, I hate that expression, on your toes. On your toes doesn't help anybody, does it? On your toes, you're up and can't move anywhere. <laughs> you'd, 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 you'd tilt off, wouldn't you? You'd be off balance. You'd fall over, you know, exactly. So, you know, it's not on your toes, it's on the balls of your feet. Now, Lee, the, the tendency that I found, to give me a little bit of room, Lee, here, just for a second, so I'll just jump there. Tendency I found is when people move to the back corners, they turn and they chase the ball. And then the ball's behind them and it becomes a boast. What Lee's just demonstrated there is this dropping of the hips. And I know Tanya done a lot of this last week, this opening of the hips, moving into the back corners. So if you just want to give that one more go, so you can do one more little burst to that for me. Lee, maybe a little bit quicker, but really dropping your hip for me. Lovely. Very good. Super. Hope you're doing this at home. It's such a good way, Karts, isn't it, to take the ball early and to hit on the rise and not be forced all the way into the back corners. If you can just drop your hip behind the ball and hit... Um, off yeah, that, that leg. A absolutely, and, and it's something that in lockdown I've been doing a lot of demonstrations upstairs in my in my loft room with, where you've stayed many a time, Lee. You know, and I'm limited on space, and I've actually changed the way that I've moved. I'm, I'm ghosting now off my left leg in that back corner, which is something I never used to do. Okay, so if we can just have a little look at the back corners now, Lee. If we could just do um, a three and a four for me. And we're going cross courts from, from both, Lee. Cross courts from both. So lifting underneath the ball. Beautiful. Follow the ball, Lee, as you lift it out. Super. I love the fact that you're getting Lee to think about the shots, Cards. It's so important to, to know exactly what shot he's hitting. And then also we can just check it out and see. You can see that ball is going cross court that he's hitting or, or if it was there. Great work with his elbow. And I think also you can see his grip, you know, as you focus on his, focus on his grip, it's, it's tight when he hits, it's loose when he's moving, he's helping himself. Hey, you just a few few more for us, Lee, there. Beautiful. And the one thing that you've always said, Lee, Lee Drew, that is, you know, these targets in the back corners, you've got to get behind the ball. You know, I watch so many people go, and the ball's behind them, and they only got one option of shot. What yeah. Lee's trying to do is hit. Unfortunately, we haven't got a camera from the side, but I can assure you that he's really trying to get his front hit behind the ball that gives him options from those, those corners. We, we want options. If you've got options in those back corners, 
you're going to cause your opponent some problems. If you haven't got options, they're going to read it. That's really good, Lee. So I just let the guys at home perhaps have a little go with that. Really thinking about easing the racket, bringing the racket out the corners, using it as a little bit of a guide, a little bit of float, creating that rhythm. One, and again, I've said it already tonight, but the one thing that Lee's doing really well is absorbing the sound in the floor. He's not stamping the floor, you know, it's, it's actually gliding. And one thing I suggest when you do your ghosting, do it at a pace that you can't hear your feet hitting the floor. And if that means starting doing it as a walking pace, do it as a walking pace. Just glide across the floor, then gradually increase the pace until eventually you're moving at a pace that you want to be. But really feel the floor. Professional players will quite often just start slowly walking it out, especially if they're learning new movements, won't they? They'll, ju they'll just build it and then slowly get, get quicker and then be able to change paces and change directions in that movement. Absolutely. What, what Lee, I'll, I'll pose you a question, Lee. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about these back corners. What sort of sequence of, of shots would you, would you be thinking of here? I'm sort of thinking of a couple of, couple of sort of drills down, you know, out of number four, perhaps. You know, and then the punch volley cross court, and then it builds a little bit, couple of doors. So you're trying to build that rally a little bit. Yeah, so I quite like the exchange of straight drives. So where you imagine that there's a couple of straight drives, and then all of a sudden a cross court comes that you look to volley, or the, you, the it beats you with the volley, and you have to go back and fetch it from the other corner. So I quite like that Lovely. rotating drives where you exchange and fight for the the middle Lovely. area of the court, sometimes going back, sometimes cutting it off. Super. Okay, so you didn't hear that, Lee, but what we do, you know when we do the rolling drive, so maybe go in and do a couple of, couple of straight drives out of four, and then your opponent's lifted your cross court, yeah? You're looking for the volley, but you haven't quite got it, and then you fall back, and then we rally down the right-hand wall, yeah? And joining at home with this, you can, you can watch Lee and just go through it, so drive, your opponent's driven it, also notice here, what, where is his T position? Look, his T's moved, isn't it? His T's moved to the left. So keep that nice, beautiful movement, Lee. Really good. Really good. See, his T's naturally moved. He's well drilled. They've gone out, look for the volley. You missed the volley, Lee. And you see, ah, beautiful. I know that's Lee Drew's favourite. I wanted to get that one in tonight. It's, 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 <laughs> I was always missing that. the volley cut. Yeah, uh, you showed me that, that, that up. I think it was over here at one of our regional squads that we've done, Lee. 2009. Lovely, Lee. Keep going a few more. So... Guys, just go with it. Drive. Open the face a little bit more, Lee. Get a little bit more height. Good lad. Lovely use of the arm. Look the volley. Superb. Really good. Lovely. Lovely. That's super. And have a little breather, Lee. You'd, you'd be exhausted. Lovely. Brilliant. So hopefully you, you, you're doing that one at home. So, you know, that does happen a lot, doesn't it? You know, drive, drive, drive. Somebody goes cross court. Ah, oh, I can't quite volley. And then we build the rally down the left-hand side of the court. I love the yeah, fact that from, from there as well, Karts, you, you can always throw in that they boast you or they drop you. So all of a sudden you're going from that rotating calmness of the drives and exchanging, looking for it. Suddenly they attack yes. you and you have to get onto that ball. Absolutely, Lee. And I think, I think for me, that over this period with, with the movement, and it's obviously something that we've only been able to do remote, haven't been able to do much with it. Some of the, the, the most uncomfortable movements are the movements that people don't practice. They tend to come into the front yeah, and go cross court. Like it tend to go cross from the back. It's that movement that Lee started with tonight, one to two. You know, that's a horrible movement, isn't it? There, boom, and then back, and then I'm up here. It's so easy just to go diagonal and run around the court, whereas you really get it into those real nitty gritties of movement patterns. Um, I thought that was a lovely little uh, exercise there, Lee. Really good. Could we? Um, could we now do some sequences, a bit like what we've just done? But could we do a, a three? Three cross court. Your opponent's now played a drive. You've come in, you've managed to intercept it with a volley. Yeah. And they got you back to four. And we reset. So three, five, four. Cross court. Lovely. They played it. Yeah. You played book and they got you back to four. And then reset and reset. Really think about the sequence. That's it. Don't just go at it one place. Think about the sequence, Lee. And I, I know Lee, Lee's a fit lad, a very fit lad, I tell you. And, he, and he, he's, he's breathing here a wee bit now. So, you know, go at a pace at home that you're comfortable with. Lovely footwork. Look at his toes. Good, Lee. Lovely. Look, watching the ball. Keep it real, Lee. Just pick the pace up. Give me five real fast ones now. So, with the te technique breaking down a little bit. Good. Back in. Into three. Good for number five. Come on, guys. Pick the pace up. Number four. Lovely. Number three. 
back to the tee and rest. Well done, Lee. Blinded. Cards. We, yes. We've ha we've had a question from Fatum. He was, he's basically saying that when when the game is slowed right down, so when when the game's going naturally fast, we move quickly. Yes. But then, yes. say an opponent slows it down, it's very easy to drift into the slowness and and match the the sort of the pace of the ball and the pace of the opponent. What would you do yes. to try and get the the body and the feet quick when when your opponent's trying to slow you down? So how would you practice that with your ghosting? Well, I think, I think what, what, what perhaps I haven't said, and, and I think Lee's demonstrated it really well, is actually that very quick moving out. I think, you know, it, it can be, it's, I always think of Jan Shear, Lee, you know, at those, at those back corners. I remember watching him play the British Open and my family was, oh, he looks like he's walking. He never walked at all, but he got into those positions. And it's that fast acceleration, that first step that leads into all. And I think, that I think that might answer the question. Hopefully, I'm not sure. You know, it's, 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 it is maybe slow in, but still getting that acceleration back out. Yeah, and I, I think that... also it's just everything you've been talking about so far this evening is all about the mindset and the approach and the realism. And it's knowing and being aware and feeling that when your opponent's trying to slow you down, the odds are they want to play slowly. So then you need to instinctively want to attack. So they're slowing it down look to speed them up. And, and I think if you've got that mindset with it, you'll start to do what Janshia did in terms of the snap back to the middle of the court, watching and then pouncing on the ball and back. And, and, and that's why I like those targets across the middle, Lee, for the volley, looking for the volley, getting out and hunting the volley, not letting the ball fall, take the game to your opponent, up the pace by taking the ball early. Doesn't necessarily mean to doesn't mean move frantically. It means getting onto the ball a little bit earlier. Peter Nichol, you know, the greatest exponent, just taking the ball out, just plopping the ball on the front wall, hunting that volley. OK, I'm conscious that Lee's going to probably get a bit stiff here in a minute. So we'll have a little go like we did at the, um, at the front of the court. I'm just going to call some random numbers now, Lee. So the technique might break down here a little bit. This is trying to get the guys ready for when they get back to court. So a little bit of fast movement here, Lee. So I'll call it and point it, OK? Four. Four. Five. Three lift. Buy yourself time. Three lift. Good. Two cross. Two cross. Come forward, Lee. Look for that volley. A bit further forward. A bit further forward. Two cross. Up there. Good man. Five straight. Good. Four straight. Lovely. Superb. Well done. Superb. Cards. What would yes. be your ideal position when you're in the middle of the court, when you're about to call? So say Lee, Lee hits his shot, comes back to the middle, and then he's waiting for you to, to call the next one. You obviously mentioned balls of your feet, but what else would you want from the body? What, what would you be looking for? Well, I think what Lee done previously at the exercise, the T started to move a little bit, didn't it? So I'll be looking about the T position um, I think also I'd like to hold him there perhaps a little bit longer to really engage that split step. I think maybe there we were going a little bit quick, but that was meant that, that was for a purpose to really up the, up the ante a little bit. But I think probably getting to hold the tee just that little bit longer, which a lot of players don't like doing, like we said previously, they like running through the tee, but actually holding and getting that, that position where, you know, um, you, you're on the, on the balls of your feet and there's a slight flex in the knee and you're just hanging on the tee. So you stay quite got, tall. You stay as tall as you can, Lee, at the tee. And as you move in, you move down that door wedge. And then you, as you move out, you move back up the door wedge. Like a piece of cheese, down and up. The tendency, uh, if you could demonstrate it badly for me, Lee, is to go in and then pop up and then run backwards. We go, we go, to, we go to the front, actually, yeah. So you go in and then pop up. Yeah, it's, it's that it, 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 even, even more severe than that. It's like, uh, and, then, and then backwards. I know you can't do that now, Lee. But yeah, and then, <laughs> you, you've trained him too well. Yeah, well he's, he's doing really well. But that's the tendency, isn't it? And certainly with some of our younger players, Lee, that we work with, you know, they take that big lunge and then they're off balance and they're up and they're backwards pedaling. It's all, all, all off kilter. You know, he's trying to keep that smooth ease, tall to low and then gradually back up. And I think Lee's demonstrated that, that really well tonight for us. Mm, definitely. And then I think with the hold is also then getting you ready, isn't it, for when your opponent hits. So you're looking to time your split step and the snap away from the middle as your opponent hits and you holding and, and making Lee go at different timings. 
and rhythms means that you're just getting ready. Should we just yeah. do that for everybody? I'll get Lee holding. So I'll, I'll call the numbers, guys, if you're ready at the tee. I'll hold you there just that little bit longer. Okay? Okay, Lee. So I'm going to hold you there that wee bit longer now. Three, two, one, four. Four. Good man. Five. Five. You keep you moving as fast as you can, but hold that to good. Four. Good lad. Lovely. That's it. Now you've got the intensity up. Three. It's horrible movement, is it? So hard. And two. Good. And four. And five. And five. Good. So that I mean, if, if Lee can't you can't hear Lee talking, you know, unfortunately. But you know, if, if Lee could tell you, you know, that that really starts to burn. You know, that whole. You know, that, that, that's what you're trying to achieve when you're playing, is it stop your opponent at the tee, hold them for a second, then deliver the shot. Yeah, and that, that disrupts the movement. So I think whilst that is so hard to play against, I think it's a good thing to train. I think it's a good thing to actually start to hold the tee as long as you can. We'll come on to a couple of other fast, uh, fast feet exercises in a minute that, that Lee and I have done. We'll get, we'll get the guys to, to have a go in a minute. How are we going for time, Lee? Well, I reckon we've got just over five minutes or so, Cuts. Oh, okay. All right. So I'll, 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 I'll bring in the whole court now. Um, so bringing in a little bit of movement, we're going to go one cross court lift to four, four straight drop to six, six cross court lift to three drop. So cross court lift from one lead, cross court lift. You're starting, to, that there. You're starting to cover the whole court here, aren't you? We are indeed. Cross court lift and drop. So one, four, six, three, one, four, opening up the whole court, six, and three, using his racket, look at him using it, lovely shot, Lee, one, four, straight drop, Lee, reduce the swing a little bit, that's lovely, cross foot lift, right on. oh, lovely, I don't think you noticed that, you're probably busy doing this, lovely adaption of the grip there, let his racket come through the hand, so all the while thinking about it, it's really good, Lee, give us a couple more, buddy, a couple more, very good. And timely. Brilliant. Well done. Superb. I'll let the guys at home have a little go with that. So it's one, one, four, six, three. A couple more shots. I love, I love the control and the change of shots and the way that Lee was adapting the whole time within that. So although he was keeping the pattern the same, there were, there were little changes and subtleties like the straight drop was going in there, the lift out of the court rather than just getting on the ball and hitting it. So... I love those little subtleties that were going on in the ghosting, as well as how easily he was then covering the court from corner to corner. Absolutely. And like I said, at the front front left, number six there, you know, as he went into lift, he's let the racket slip through the hand a little bit. You know, he's got a little bit extra purchase. He's got a little bit further and he's, he's, he's managed to get that ball. If the grip's locked, you know, he might have missed that, but he let the grip just slip through his fingers and then that, the arm brought him back out all rhythmical. Really good. Okay, uh, so what, a couple, couple, three more minutes, Lee, have we got? Yeah, yeah, I reckon a couple more exercises and then I think everyone will be finished. Lee will be ready to, um, to have a bit of rest, I think. Lee will be ready to drop, I think. Okay, so you, uh, we mentioned about that, that initiate, uh, getting that sort of split step really going. Some of, the, some of the drills I've been doing with Lee is a bit of fast feet. So, sorry, I'm sorry to throw this one upon you, Lee. I know this is tough, this one. So what I've been doing with Lee is doing some fast feet, really quick feet, and then calling a number. So you should really get that split step going. So if you want to come in with me at home on this guy, so really fast feet for me, Lee. Six. Ah, I got him. And fast feet. Six. Good lad. Fast feet. Four. Very good. Fast feet. Three. Good man. Beautiful split step there, Lee. One. Oh, superb. Lovely. Have a little breathe. I'm really off. Okay, guys. So that's another really good little exercise. A little fast feet and then get the numbers called to you. Put those on your phone. You don't know where you're going. Really good split step from Lee there. Really hitting the floor and pushing off very aggressively. My earpiece is just about to come out. Isn't it? <laughs> that was very sharp, though, wasn't it? The work that, that Lee was doing just in the, in the middle with, the, with how quick the feet were and then being able to change direction and, and get to the shot as quickly as possible. That really did exaggerate the snap in the movement. Absolutely. We're going to do one more little set of that. So if everyone's ready, if they're at the tee for me, I'll call the numbers. Hope you can all hear me. Sorry, Lee. Fast feet. Four. 
Five. Good man. Come that volley. Five. Beautiful. Lovely use of the right arm. Five. Good boy. Six. And again. In again. Good. Lovely. Well done. Fast eight. Fast eight. Fast eight. One. Beautiful, Lee. Three. Beautiful. Well done. Well done, everyone. That is hard. You know, maybe 20 seconds of that. Maybe 30 seconds max. The one thing I haven't said, um, you know, it's, it, I, I used to do it. And I, I don't I think I got it wrong. You know, it's like this 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off, 40 seconds off. You know, think about your rally length. Six shots, seven shots, five shots, 15 shots. I don't know. You know, you want to go to the, to, to the sort of length of your rallies. Um, I don't think necessarily 30 seconds on and 30 seconds off is, 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 is the length of your rally. No, and I also, the, also time. the amount of time you have in between rallies as well. Because what, what do they say? The average is about 15 seconds, isn't it, Tops? It's exactly, Lee. You know, and I think the 30 on, 30 off is probably good when you're learning new movement patterns. But then think about your game. You know, 45 minutes game, 30 minute matches. You know, you want to think about your bite sized chunks, six, seven minutes of work. Um, yeah, really good that, Lee. The other one, I just want to chuck one other one in for everybody with this, this sort of uh, loading and explosiveness. Could you do some of those hops for me, Lee, that we've done? Yeah. So you're going to, everybody, if you get onto your, or hop in on your right foot, hop, 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 one. Uh, very good. Lovely. On your right foot, Lee, hop, hop, four. Oh, lovely. So again, really gets the player to think about what they're doing. Right foot, six. Good man. Might be getting a bit fatigued now. Two. Lovely. Lovely split step, Lee. Five. Good man. Lovely. So, again, another good one for you to do, guys, at home, Matt. You know, just hop in and get that split step, really initiating that split step, pushing off. Anything, any questions, Lee? Lee, Drew, on that at all? Or? No, no, no. But what are you looking for? When, when you're doing the, the hops, what is that looking looking to do? Is it just to, to teach you to, to be able to balance on both legs and then push off and, and go in any direction from that position in case? And also that, that drop and that sink on the floor, that pushing off. It's almost yeah, like an opponent might hold you and break your rhythm and then you can still snap and go. 100%. And you're loading legs, you know. Yeah, that, that's quite hard doing that for a four or five and then get that split, but it really does initiate that split step. Um, one thing you that's coming... How often would you do this and and for how long and to really be able to build it up and how long would you expect someone to take to be able to move to the quality that, say, Lee's doing this now? Well, if, I mean, if Lee could hear that question, I think Lee's put so much time in in the last year to his movement. He, he wasn't moving like this a year ago, but he's putting in, what, two, three sessions a week on your movement, aren't you, Lee? You know, uh, uh, of a good 20 minutes, Lee. Um, I think it's a, it's a great exercise. And again, you don't have to be on a squash court, do you? You know, you can find a, you can find a bit, you can find, a, uh, you know, your patio if you, if you need be and just divide it up. You only, only need a quarter of a court. You know, my tee can move from anywhere around in that quarter. Um, ideally on a court, you know, you've got the walls and you know where you are. I've done lots of ghosts where people are totally unfamiliar where they are. So the walls keep us in check. So I don't know, Lee, I just, uh, as, as many times as you can. And you, get, you can get, you you can throw this in at any point, can't you? Before sessions start, you can you can throw it into warm up. You could, if you say have a really easy match, you could throw it in at the end. So, the the more you accumulate of small amounts of ghosting as well as standalone sessions, it's going to make a massive difference and have a big impact on your game in the end. I know what you've done with the juniors. It's a bolt on session, is it? Last thing we're going to do, guys. We're going to, we're, we're, and this is this is a little bit more of the rally, the, the rally sort of context. Lee, I'd like you to do four shots. Any, you're in charge. Four shots anywhere you like, floating, floating. And I'm going to chuck in three shots, and you can go as fast as you can for three. So four shots anywhere you like, guys. Floating the court as if you're rallying. Nice building the rally. There's one, lovely. Anywhere you want to go, Lee. So, so you're building that rally, Lee, Drew. You're building the rally. There's his full shot. Now, free flat out, Lee. As fast as you can. You're scrambling. Boom, boom, boom. Scramble anywhere you like, Lee. Scramble anywhere you like. Lovely. Back to four float. Back to that. Lovely. So a little bit more, perhaps, rally built here. Just keep that going, Lee. Lovely. There's two. Lovely. Three. As a venture to the front of the court. And three flat out again, Lee. Boom. You're scrambling. Boom, boom. And you're back in control. You're back into your four. 
Well, lovely. Hope the guys are going with this. Four nice and slow. Good. Lovely. And then you're in charge. Two or three fast as you like. They boom. Boom. Lovely. Brilliant, brother. Super. Super. So, you know, that, that to me, uh, Lee Drew, is, 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 you know, trying to keep it into that match sort of, you know, you've learned your patterns. You've become very drilled in terms of your grip, your elbow, the movement, the rhythm, the swing, the timing. You've then increased it a little bit, but still in sequence. And then right at the end there, we've chucked in some really hard stuff. He's done full floating. We're building the rally, in the rally with your five, and boom. But, and then suddenly they chuck in that little boast and it goes hell for leather. The game goes all over the place, doesn't it? For three shots. And then suddenly Lee builds himself back in with a lift and we're back into the rally again. Then it happens again. And they're the things that are very, very hard to train for. That, that requires a lot of discipline to get that boom on, off, boom on, off, you know? Um, and Lee, Lee coped with that really well there. So, look, Brilliant. as I said at the start, Lee, you know, movement is, you know, you get uh, 10 coaches in the room. They're all going to have different opinions about movement. The, the thing for me, for everyone at home, before you start getting back into play, just keep it real. Think about, you know, your, 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 your mate that you play every week. What does he do? Let's, let's think about taking some volleys. He's really good at the little drop at the front. I need to think about moving into the front. He's really hard. He's a cross court. I need to think about some of those exercises that, that Lee was doing. You know, keep it real. Keep it real. And I, I, I guarantee you, with, with right practice, your technique, your game will improve. Brilliant. Thanks a lot, Karts. Thanks a lot, Lee. What a great session. It was brilliant to dive so deeply into ghosting and to, to all the technicalities and the thought process that goes in behind that. So a great session delivered by Paul Carter and really good to get into the mindset of Carts and what he's thinking about and what he's looking for. That pretty much wraps up what we've done here this evening. We will be back on Monday at six o'clock. We don't rest on bank holidays. We keep going. It's going to be a session with Josh Taylor, who's going to do some stuff around solo and movement. So that should be a great session. You can sign up for it via the Squash Fit Hub. So visit that and sign up. If you want to revisit this session, which will be more than worth it, you can do that there as well. So that pretty much concludes everything from here this evening. From myself, from Lee, and from Paul Carter, we, were, we hope you've enjoyed it. We'll see you next week on Monday for more Squash Fit brought to you by England Squash. See you then.